started. So again, welcome. I am Becky Fasina with Alliance Health. I am their community education specialist. And today you are here to learn a little bit about ultraviolet safety. Um, but before we get into kind of the meat and potatoes of the presentation, I want to give you a little bit of information about Alliance Health um, for those of you who may not um, know a whole lot about us. So we are the local management entity managed care organization for public behavioral health care in Durham, Wake, Cumberland, and Johnston counties. Now that's going to change a little bit as Medicaid, Medicaid transformation comes down the pike, but for right now where we stand, we are still working with individuals in the public behavioral health care realm. We serve approximately 471,000 Medicaid eligible and uninsured individuals among a total population of over 1.7 million. We manage a network of providers ensuring quality care is received, as well as help individuals access care and navigate systems. I want to highlight a couple of programs that are currently going on. Um, this is Hope for NC. This is the North Carolina Department of Health and Human, um, health and Human Services established two mental health resources to help North Carolinians cope and build resilience during times of crisis, including the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, although we are all out there getting vaccinated, we are still currently in the midst of the pandemic. Um, oftentimes we forget that. And the Hope for NC Helpline, that 855 number there, it connects North Carolinians to additional mental health and resilience supports that help them cope and build resilience during times of crisis. It is available to everyone in North Carolina's 100 counties during the COVID-19 crisis. Hope for NC includes a crisis counseling program tailored for COVID-19, which provides immediate crisis counseling services to individuals affected by the ongoing COVID-19 public health crisis. This initiative is in partnership with all seven of the state's LME MCOs, which Alliance is one, and Real Crisis Intervention Incorporated out of Greenville, North Carolina. Hope for NC is available 24 hours per day, seven days a week, to speak to a live person. And then the second one I want to highlight is this Hope for Healers helpline. That's a 919 number there. It's an initiative in partnership with the North Carolina Psychological Foundation. It provides mental health and resilience supports for healthcare professionals, emergency medical specialists, first responders, other staff who work in healthcare settings, and their families throughout the state who are experiencing stress from being on the front lines of the state's COVID-19 response. Hope for Healers is also available 24 hours per day, seven days a week for people to reach out for support from a licensed mental health professional. So two great resources here at your fingertips if you or someone you know um, may need to access them. So today, this is what we're going to review and look at. We're going to talk about what is UV radiation? Um, how does it affect skin cancer and how to protect ourselves from the radiation? So with summer in full swing, it's July 1st, um, it's the perfect time to head outdoors and enjoy the sunny weather. But are you really protecting yourself from potential risks? The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has named July as Ultraviolet Safety Month. The goal is to spread the word about how important it is to protect everyone's skin from the harmful effects of UV radiation. Now, most individuals don't realize that UV light is a form of radiation. So by definition, radiation is the emission of energy from any source. Um, radiation has many different types but UV radiation is a form of electromagnetic radiation. The main source of UV radiation is the sun, although it can come from other man-made sources, such as tanning beds and welding torches. Radiation exists across a spectrum from very high energy, like X-rays and gamma rays, to very low energy, like radio waves. And UV rays have more energy than visible light, but not as much energy as x-rays. And that's why they, they lay us down with that protective gear when we're taking any type of x-ray to protect us 
from the radiation that um, is emitted from those X-ray machines. And so when you look at um, this um, diagram or this graphic here, we're really looking at the sun and we're gonna talk a little bit about the different types of UV rays that are emitted from the sun. And so um, the sun emits radiation in the form of UV light, and then it's classified into three different types by wavelength. That's UVA, UVB, and then the UVC. Now the ozone layer is a protective layer in the Earth's stratosphere that blocks all UVC light. So we kind of, I kind of rule that one out. It's one we don't talk about much because we have the stratosphere that protects us from the UVC light. But UVB and UVA actually pass through that stratosphere layer. And so UVA pen penetrates deeply into the skin um, it's the type of UV radiation that causes wrinkling or leathering of the skin. And UVB is the type of radiation that causes sunburns. And so exposure to both UVA and UVB are associated with the development of skin cancer. So it's really important for us um, to protect ourselves during exposure to sunlight. Now, UV radiation is at its highest when and where the sun's rays are the strongest. So think about that. This means that UV levels will be highest around noon on a clear sunny day, and even more so during the summer months, which is why July is the perfect time to be discussing this. And then UV levels will also be highest near surfaces that reflect sunlight. So snow, sand, and then um, it reflects off the water and it's more pervasive at higher altitudes. So if you're going skiing and you're out in the ski slopes out in Colorado, really and truly you're gonna be um, 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 exposed to a lot more um, higher levels of UV radiation on that mountaintop. So let's talk a little bit about skin cancer. We know that UVA and UVB are the ones that attribute to um, skin cancer cases. And so according to the American Cancer Society, an estimated 5.4 million basal skin cancers are diagnosed annually. And nearly 3.3 million people are diagnosed with squamous cell skin cancers annually. There are two different types. Um, even more troublesome is that many people are diagnosed with more than one skin cancer type. Invasive melanoma represents about 1% of all skin cancer cases, but it accounts for the majority of skin cancer deaths with an estimated 87,110 new cases of invasive melanoma annually and 9,730 deaths annually. Overexposure to UV radiation can also cause eye cataracts, eye damage, skin aging that we talked about, growths on the skin, and immune system suppression. That's something that I did not know. Um, so something that I learned new is that the effects that the sun and, the, um, and UV radiation has actually on our immune system. So we can do some things. There are things that we can do to minimize our risks um, that comes with sun exposure. And so looking here at this um, slide, we can block UV light with protective clothing. This includes wearing a hat, um, preferably with um, a wide brim, just like the gentleman in that picture, as well as shade protective clothing, um, like the woman on the right. Um, this can partly shield the skin from the harmful effects of UV ray exposure. Um, the American Academy of Ophthalmology notes that many people forget to wear sunglasses that have a label that says protects 99% of UV radiation for eye protection. So we know that radiation can cause damage to our eyes, um, but again, I'm unaware of thinking to look for that label on our sunglasses when you buy them at Walmart or Target, or I always get mine at Marshall's because um, I tend to lose them all the time, but looking for that label that says protects us from 99% of UV radiation, really important for the protection of our eyes. Um, stay in the shade, especially when UV radiation is most intense at midday between the hours of 10 a.m and 4 p.m. The sun can still damage the skin on cloudy day, day, so we need to remember that, or in the winter, so year-round protection is important. Use caution 
Um, when you're near um, reflective surfaces, like I said, like water, snow, and sand, which can reflect the damaging um, rays of the sun. This can increase the chance of sunburn, even in areas that appear to be shaded. Um, so think about when you're on the beach and you've got your umbrella, um, there are the, the UV rays can still penetrate that umbrella. So you still wanna be cautious, even though you may have some shade protection around you. Individuals can experience more UV exposure at higher altitudes that have less atmosphere to absorb that UV radiation like we spoke about previously. Um, look at sunscreen, choose the right sunscreen and apply it correctly. Another um, pieces of important information that I guess I just, I learned along the way and didn't realize until I started digging deeper into this topic. The US Food and Drug Administration's regulations for sunscreen labeling, they recommend that the sunscreen have a sun protection factor, that's your SPF of at least 15. And it should protect against both UVA and UVB radiation. So on that label, make sure you're seeing the number 15 and that you're also looking for protection against UVA and UVB. To get the most protection out of your sunscreen, choose one with an SPF of at least 15. But if your skin is fair, like mine and my children, um, you may want a higher SPF of either 30 to 50. Um, now, above 50, you really don't get that much more protection. And so oftentimes you'll find that the higher SPFs are more expensive. Stick to your 50 if that's the highest that you want to go because you're not getting that much more protection after 50. You may be paying more for that number, but you're not getting more protection. So that's just um, a smart buyer tip for you. Um, according to the National Council on Skin Cancer Prevention, most people apply only 25 to 50% of the recommended amount of sunscreen, which is why dermatologists often recommend a higher SPF of only 15. So the recommended is, um, you know, by our, our governmental entities is 15, but oftentimes our dermatologists are saying, put the 30 on, put the 40 or 50 on because we're not really applying it correctly. When out in the sun, apply at least one ounce, so that's a palmful, one ounce of sunscreen every two hours. And this was eye-opening to me. A family of four, I'm a, I have a family of five, but a family of four should use an entire eight ounce bottle of sunscreen during an afternoon outside. That to me was mind blowing. Um, I, that's just brand new information that I know um, I am not properly um, protecting my family because we certainly are not using an entire eight ounce out an eight ounce bottle of sunscreen when we are out in the sun. So that's something that I need to to start um, really recognizing and changing my habits. So what you want to do is get that bottle, generously slather it on. 30 minutes before heading outside to allow it to bind to your skin. So I do do that correctly. I get my kids all, um, get them in their bathing suits. We lotion up before we hit the beach. That way it gives us some time for it to bind to our skin. Those individuals that are that get on the beach and then lather up and just go and hit the water immediately, it has not given that lotion the correct amount of time to bind to our skin to do the work it's supposed to do and to work effectively. And then we wanna reapply every two hours and even more often when sweating or swimming, even if the sunscreen is waterproof, you still need to reapply. Um, we also wanna stay away from sources of artificial UV light. That's that tanning bed. There is no such thing as a safe tan. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention stress that indoor tanning significantly increases the risk of developing melanoma, basal and squamous cell cancers. It also causes premature aging of the skin and it suppresses our immune system. So stay away, please, please, please from those tanning beds. So what doctors and dermatologists wish we knew? You're gonna, you're gonna know that now walking away from this presentation. And so the first one is, you know, you're probably not getting the SPF you think you're getting. We kind of we kind of highlighted that just a few slides ago, but SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it's the number that gives you a rough idea of how long a sunscreen guards against the sun's damaging rays. And so again, this is in interesting information I don't think I knew prior to doing this. 
If you usually burn after 10 minutes, for instance, in the sun, so if you usually burn after 10, um, 10 minutes, SPF 30 is meant to give you 30 times more sun time or five hours before you burn. That's what it's supposed to do. So if you, you burn in 10 minutes of being out in the sun, it's gonna give you 30 times that protection. But here's the rub with it all, is that like we said before, studies are often done with much more of a significant coating of sunscreen than what we usually put on because we're not doing it correctly. So just be cognizant of that, even though it says 30 times more, 30 times longer than what we would normally burn, we're not really applying it effectively. So that time really is diminished. Um, don't forget your scalp. Don't forget your head, your noggin. You get more sun here than you realize, um, especially when you're in the water. Um, for those of us that, that lack hair on our head, we really need to make sure um, that we are coating um, our scalp appropriately and that we remember to continue to reapply again in the water when we're swimming or when we're sweating. Um, and it's an area, an area prone to skin cancer. Look for sunscreens that are made for the scalp. They're actually out there because they're non-greasy and you can apply it even for those of us that um, have more hair than others, you can apply it and your hair won't be greasy. Um, a healthy base tan is an oxymoron. That's the third bullet point, right? So the proverbial base tan, you've heard people say, I think I've said it in my teen years as well. The proverbial base tan, it won't protect you. It's actually a sign that your skin is damaged. The dark pigment is melanin, um, which the skin sends out in, re in response to UV exposure. Browning yourself in a tanning bed is no, no better. We talked about that. Tanning indoors can increase your risk for squamous cell skin cancer by 83% and basal cell, and basal cell skin cancer by 29%. Wear sunscreen even on cloudy days because up to 80% of UV rays penetrate clouds. So even though there's cloud cover, we are still getting that exposure um, of UV rays. And then finally on this one, be careful how you use those sticks and sprays. They're super convenient, much better you know, than taking the lotion and lathering it all up and trying to get all the white rubbed in. Um, they're much more convenient. So those, those sticks are great for small areas, you know, under our eyes, on our faces, and sprays make it a lot easier to cover those hard to reach places like our backs but you really have to apply them properly, which a lot of people don't do. And that's what we're finding. And so when you use that stick, make sure you go back and forth at least four times to ensure that you have applied enough. That's what they recommend at least four times. And then for sprays, look for thick mineral formulas. And again, you can find that on the, um, on the label. You're looking for a thick mineral formula on the spray. You wanna hold that nozzle close to your skin and spray until your skin is covered. And then you wanna rub it in. So not spray and walk away, but you wanna spray it all, make sure your skin is covered and then rub um, that spray into your skin. Again, you know, food for thought, things that we may not um, have known that we maybe have been doing it wrong all along. And then here's a few more things that you should know. This is really about our self checks. You should be examining your own skin um, and they recommend on a monthly basis. This will help catch skin cancer early. So you're doing your own self-examination on a monthly basis. Um, they recommend as a routine checkup to go see your dermatologist and have them do a skin scan yearly. Um, I do that yearly. Skin cancer does run in my family. My father has had spots um, and has been treated for that. So making sure that you're doing those preventative measures so that it can be caught early. Um, look for these signs of suspicious moles, which should be examined by a dermatologist. So here's your A, B, C, D, E rule for self-check. So the A stands for asymm asymmetrical. So what we're looking for is does one part of the mole look different than the other? They should be asymmetrical. They should look the same. But if one side of that mole or one portion of the mole does not look the same as the other, that's a red flag. B stands for border. Are the edges irregular or jagged? Is it uneven? Are parts of it lighter or darker? So those are the things that you're looking for in terms of border. 
Um, oh my gosh, I missed C. C is color. Has the color changed? Looking for um, variations in color. D is diameter. Is the spot larger than the size of a pencil eraser? So if it's larger than the size of a pencil eraser, that could be problematic. Doesn't mean it is, but it could be problematic. And then E is evolving. So is this, um, so has the mole or, or spot changed? This is perhaps the most important. Any spot that changes size, shape, color, or elevation. So has it, you know, was it flat and now it has a bump? Or that develops symptoms like bleeding, oozing, itching, or crusting should be looked at by a dermatologist immediately. So those are your key factors that you're looking at when you're doing your own self-check um, and self-scans. Um, also remember that you can get skin cancer in places where the sun doesn't shine, including your palms. Um, the bottoms of your feet is another area to look at. In fact, um, I have one, um, a spot on my heel of my foot um, that my doctor has continued to keep an eye on. It's in an odd place, but it has changed shape. Um, and so that's one that they're keeping an eye on. So fingers crossed, it still looks fine. But again, it's not a place that gets sun exposure, but we need to be mindful of that. Um, also your breasts and your buttocks, can you can have spots there. So just anywhere on your skin where skin is skin, um, you most certainly um, can get skin cancer. So the FDA requires that all sunscreens be formulated to maintain their original strength for at least three years. Um, if the bottle doesn't have an expiration date on it, um, I want you all to take your marker and write the purchase date on it. And then you can then gauge it from three years. Again, something I didn't know. I didn't realize um, lotion had an expiration date. So if you don't see one on the bottle, be mindful of that. And then just write the date of purchase on it. And that way you'll know um, when you need to be getting rid of it. Um, keep in mind that sunscreens degrade faster in the heat. Um, and so if you're out in the sun or you're out on the beach, tuck that sunscreen under your chair um, or into a cooler when you're outside and don't store it in your car. You know, a lot of people throw it in that glove compartment box that they've got it accessible to them, um, but it really does degrade um, in high temperatures and in heat and in the sun. Uh, although skin cancer is more common in fair skinned people, Anyone can develop skin cancer, even people who aren't prone to sunburn or who tan easily. So do your self checks, um, get examined uh, and get examined by a dermatologist annually. And then finally, the last thing I want you all to be mindful of is that the safest tan for any of us is one that comes from a bottle. <laughs> and I just, um, I just love that. So and you can find them in, in very varying shades, sprays, lotions, sticks. Um, they come in all kinds of forms. Um, I know we all love a good tan. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. Um, but, you know, our safest, safest tan comes from one straight out of the bottle. So as we move into July, I wanted to get this information out to you um, because it is July and it's the start of summer. And in fact, I'm packing up my family today and we are headed off to the beach. And so I want you all to be mindful of this, right? As we're spending more and more time outside. Um, does anybody have any questions or concerns for me about the presentation? I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you gained some new knowledge. I know I certainly did um, in preparing for this and realized that there were things that I've been doing wrong for years <laughs> and didn't know that I was doing it wrong. Um, so Shirley, if you want to unmute yourself, um, if you've got any thoughts, you're, you're, you're on the call today, um, my one and only participant, but I'm so glad you're here. If there's anything else you want to add or share or um, aha moments for you, maybe, please feel free to do okay. that. All right, Becky. Yeah, I did. I'm like you. I learned some things today that I did not know. And now I'll add to my checklist when I'm uh, we're going out in the sun. Um, my daughter is the one that I'm most concerned about because she's fair skinned. And uh, both my children are autistic. So autistics have a higher um they don't have a high tolerance to heat or sunlight 
So I just want to see if there's anything out there new. And this is information I can share with my uh, other parents. And uh, I'm in a couple of support groups, you know, that I can share this information with. But um, always trying to, you know, stay on top of new things and what I might be missing. And like I said, I did learn a couple of new things here that I didn't know to do. So now I can put that in my um, checklist and when, you know, we get ready to go out into the sun for protection. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Shirley. And what I'm going to do too is I'm going to, um, I will get this to my communications team and they're going to post it on our YouTube channel. And then I'll send you the link. So you can then share that link out to parents if they want to review this themselves, they want to replay it and rewatch it. Um, they're welcome to do so. Okay. Thank you so much. I'd appreciate that, Becky, and very good presentation. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking.